There we go. Uh, good morning from the Smith Hollow Homestead. Um, gosh, it has been nine months since I posted our last video. And that was about us renovating our kitchen, which as you can see, compared to the last video, it looks very different. <clears throat> Excuse the way it looks, I have a ton of dishes to do, but Kyle ripped out everything and we have tongue and groove wall there with open shelving and just really opening things up. It's a slow process, but we're getting there. Anyway, so nine months, nine months since my last video and well, look what we had going on. <laughs> uh... What's happened since then? We have had a pandemic. Uh, Kyle and I got married and we are expecting a son together um, who is due in November. So uh, yeah, I've added a little more girth to there. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, Pretty much just wanted to do a real quick update video because it's been so long and I've really had a hankering to like make a, a cooking video. So I figured um, I would share a recipe that is super easy, which is my oatmeal raisin cookies. And uh, <clears throat> you know, on top of everything else that's been going on, uh, I've been cyber schooling my son. And uh, he does his cyber school through a, um, an academy here in Pennsylvania. And it's a lot of work. Uh, you know, I, I really feel for these parents who are trying to juggle working full time and cyber schooling their kids. Because um, we probably do, you know, on a busy day, three to five hours of work for his cyber school. And that's, you know, multiple days a week. So, um, really, I, I totally feel for um, all you parents out there that are trying to juggle everything. Because just here, you know, we have, um, you know, trying to get the house ready for the baby and, excuse me, and the, the farm and the animals. And, you know, I have my stepsons here a couple days a week and... You know, trying to just juggle everything and just maintain your sanity is hard. Um, I've had a couple breakdowns, par partly because of stress, partly because of just pregnancy hormones, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, it's it's been a really tough year for everybody. So um, I figured the second part of this video, I will do a um, quick and easy oatmeal raisin cookie recipe to to start us off since I haven't been on here in so long. And uh, hopefully it'll be something that helps some moms out. You know, make some oatmeal raisin cookies. That's, uh, I wouldn't consider that a breakfast really per se, <laughs> but it's definitely a good treat that is filled with protein. And hey, they recommend that your kids take snack breaks in between their cyber schooling and whatnot. So. Uh, just hang on for a little bit and I will get you started on that oatmeal cookie recipe. <laughs> okay, so let's start assembling these cookies. Um, I do apologize. I don't know exactly where I'm going to end up when it comes to uh, being on the video here. You might get a bunch of pictures of my belly. So I'm not really sure where I'm at here. But... If all you see is belly, hopefully it doesn't cover too much. I am, <laughs> I am eight months pregnant after all. So, okay. The first thing you want to do for your oatmeal raisin cookies is start with your dry ingredients. So, got my bag of all-purpose flour. Mm -hmm. You're going to do one cup. Now we're assembling our dry ingredients in a separate bowl. 
get that as level as possible. Here we go. One cup of flour. Next up is the cinnamon. Uh, you can put your cinnamon in to taste, but the recipe itself, you can do, excuse me, uh, you can do one half teaspoon or um, a full teaspoon if you like more cinnamon. But I find that adding the nutmeg to it then puts it right where it needs to be. So I do a half teaspoon. probably hear my donkey going off in the background he sees me in the window <laughs> so he's gonna let it be known that he knows I'm in here and he desires snacks <laughs> all right so next up is the nutmeg just a quarter teaspoon of the nutmeg though because that's a little more potent than the cinnamon Next up is a half a teaspoon of baking soda. A little too much there. Oh, no, that's about perfect. <clears throat> and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Okay. It says to uh, whisk these together here. So, I forgot to grab a hand whisk. One second. All right, so just whisk your dry ingredients together. There we go, simple as that. Put that off to the side for now. Now, um, the next part of this recipe you need an electric mixer for. Uh, I have my KitchenAid stand mixer, which is just used for everything anymore. So, the first thing you want to do is uh, mix together your butter and your sugars. So, we will start with our sugar. You want to do a half a cup of packed brown sugar. Is that right? <clears throat> You'll notice that a lot of my containers are mason jars. Um, we are really trying to get away from plastic as a family. So I've been putting my ingredients in mason jars because I feel better about it environmentally. And to be honest, I feel better about it health wise too. Things are just stored in glass. Okay, so that was a half a cup of packed brown sugar. Next up is a quarter cup of white sugar. Sorry, lost my train of thought there. Okay. I'm gonna use my half a cup and eyeball it a little bit here. You learn to do that over time. Just eyeball things up. It's 
about half of a half, so that's a quarter. <clears throat> okay, half a cup of butter, <clears throat> excuse me, and a half a cup of butter is one stick, and you want it to be at room temperature. Now you're gonna wanna <clears throat> put this in your mixer and beat it till it is fluffy. Get my paddle. Okay, so continuing to beat the uh, butter and sugars together on a medium speed in the kitchen aid. Should be ready. Yep. <laughs> okay, so after you beat that mixture in your kitchen aid, um, this is what it should look like. See how it's nice and fluffy in there? Everything's combined. That's what you want. Back up there. Okay, and um, once you have that combined, you can add your, um, your egg and your vanilla. So let me bring that back over here, actually. So you're going to do one large egg. This is one of our farm fresh eggs, which are just beautiful. <clears throat> okay. And you want to do two teaspoons of vanilla for this recipe. Back to the mixer till it's combined. Medium to low speed. I almost always have to scrape down the sides. Just likes to get stuck in there. Get the other side. <laughs> Alright, now comes the fun part. We get to slowly add the dry ingredients to this mixture. Come over here, grab our dry ingredients. So that's combined. That much to start. So you're going to keep adding in your dry ingredients until it's combined. You want to do it slowly. I'll come back to you then once we have all the dry ingredients combined with the wet. Okay, so we are back with the dough. 
or the batter, I should say, not really dough, for the oatmeal cookies. And as you can see, it's this beautiful uniformed color and texture. Uh, add in the oats and the raisins. Now, you might look at your bowl and think to yourself, oh, okay, like how much is that gonna actually make? There's not much in there. But once you add the oatmeal to it and the raisins, there's more there than you think. I'll give it one good blaster. So you're going to add one and a half cups of oats. My hubby just pulled in with the diesel, so you probably hear that in the background. My apologies. Okay. okay, so there's the oats. And we're going to do two thirds of a cup of raisins. Might have to loosen them up a little bit. with your mixer or do it by hand. I'm doing it by hand since I'm already here and it's just easier. So you want to mix this up really, really well. So it's all combined. <clears throat> Cover it up with plastic and get it in the fridge for a half hour. All right, so we are back in action with these oatmeal cookies, oatmeal raisin to be specific. Um, <clears throat> I apologize if you hear the hubby in the background running the chainsaw, but he's out there making some nice rough cut pieces of wood for some homestead projects we have going on. So, okay. I put the batter in the refrigerator for 30 minutes to cool it down. Makes it easier to work with. Uh, I have the oven preheating to 350 and what you want to do is you just want to get your batter dough form it into one inch balls hopefully that's a, oh, try to get that in the camera there there we go little one inch balls and that's pretty much it. This is a normal size cookie sheet so I can go three across. Now normally if I had it on hand I would put parchment paper down to bake on because it makes things so much easier. And you don't have to worry about the sticking. But I didn't have any, so I just greased down the cookie sheet with some butter, and I'm hoping that will do the trick and that we won't have them stuck. Oh, never run away. There we go. <clears throat> so I'll get this first cookie tray in for you <clears throat> to see. give them about mm, two inches of space and like I said you're gonna want to preheat your oven to 350 <clears throat> and uh, depending on your oven you're gonna bake them 9 to 11 minutes maybe even a little bit more depending on your oven I have a, uh, a gas oven and I keep an eye on them. I think they're in for the full 11 minutes. This recipe also should make about 24 cookies, give or take a few. Be 
face mount a little bit better. All right, so these are ready for the oven. <laughs> I should have preheated it for you. We're only at about 250 degrees. So once that hits 350, I will pop these in. Like I said, nine to 11 minutes, depending on your oven. And that's pretty much all there is to it. <laughs>